One, two, three, four, five. Once I got a fish in love. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let him go again. One, I nominated Ben for the Child Courage Award. Uh, he had a short life. He was with us six years. Having two strokes, having surgery. Uh, I've never seen a child so happy and so enjoyed life. Uh, he never complained. All the hospital stays, all the poking. Uh, he just lived life to the full. Ben, in 2010, was brought to the hospital uh, and they diagnosed that he had had a stroke. And basically he had uh, little blood vessels in his head called cavernomas. Uh, and one of them on the brainstem had played. Hello. Are you going to crash into the camera? Oh, he's not. <laughs> and then up on your toes. Three. And over on the side. Bend your knee. And up on your toes. Four. And over on the side. Bend your knee. And up on your toes. Five. Okay. That's it. Do the, the other side now. Leg. Now turn around. And the other leg. Okay, over on the... Up on one leg. Are your feet straight? Yeah. Up on one leg. So I switched on the light and we just looked at him, his eyes had gone up in his head and his shoulders had basically started to jerk. So I shouted to Elman and we ran up the stairs and we rang the ambulance straight away. I mean, we knew it was a seizure. We followed the ambulance up then to the, the CUH. So Elma had got there before me with, with Ben. They basically started administering various anti-seizure medicine to try to stop the seizure, but nothing was working. You could see it. I mean, he was in the bed in front of us and we could see There'd be a whole flurry of activity yeah. where they'd administer something and then everyone would stop for a minute or two, see was this working, and then they'd go up another level and there would be another drug mm -hmm. administered and it took an hour and 40 minutes yeah. for the seizure to, to, to stop. And Ben was basically put in a, in, in a coma. Placed in a coma, yeah. Before, before the seizure stopped. They warned us Ben was going to be very distressed when the sedation eased and when he woke up and they, they told us that was a good sign, that that's what they wanted from mm. Ben. They wanted him to be upset by the tube down his throat. So we waited and we waited mm. and he didn't come around. His liver started to show signs of failure at that stage. So there, there was talk that maybe he wasn't processing the sedation, mm -hmm. so therefore it wasn't leaving his body. The nurse came in and she said, the hepatologist wants to see you. Ben's liver was continuing to deteriorate. deteriorate yeah. And then out of the blue, really, even though we'd gone to Crumlin, he said, as you know, we, we, we don't do paediatric liver transplants in Ireland. And we didn't know what it was. We'd been originally, when Ben got sick, we'd always been encouraged to talk to him and to touch him and to encourage him to wake up but they said no they wanted to not to stimulate him in any way and so we sat for two, two days, days yeah. watching, watching. watching the monitor and monday morning we met with the pediatric consultant and she told us that she believed that that ben was severely brain damaged and was unlikely to live but if he did he would never ever leave hospital when i saw the neurosurgeon I thought the fact that the neurosurgeon was yeah. coming up that maybe they were going to say we need to operate, we need to get in there straight away and Ben had been, I mean not surgery like that, but Ben had been through surgery before and had ma amazed everyone and I still thought he's going to amaze them now, you yeah. know, they're going to make one last ditch attempt, it's going to be incredibly high risk, but Ben was going to, but they came back to us and they said no. And uh, Becky hadn't arrived. Becky had arrived in London at that stage, but she hadn't she hadn't come to the hospital. So they removed a lot of the tubes and wires that, that they could. And they said I could dress Ben in pajamas. So we put a pajamas on him. And um, I washed his hair before Becky arrived. And then Becky came to say goodbye to, to Becky. I can't remember what I said it to you or you said it to me. I can't remember now at this stage, but I just remember said they're going to ask us about organ donation. What would we do? And I don't think, uh, as I said, Ben was in that position himself a few days previously, that he needed somebody to do what they were going to ask us not to do, even though they hadn't asked us yet, but we knew they were going to. I mean, 
they had been said that paediatric organs was just so rare. Uh, so we discussed it and then not long after we were approached and we were asked would we consider it and we said yes. I, I don't know what we would have done if Ben hadn't needed a, a transplant himself or hadn't come so close to needing a transplant. I suspect we might have had said no. Yeah. I, I, I really do. It, I think having been in that position, even for the shortest time, it, it, it changed our perspective. I remember being so frightened when Ben needed a liver transplant. I was so frightened that we were relying on a stranger. The last night, because they had removed all the tubes mm -hmm. and whatever, I, I could spend the last night with Ben in the bed and the, at one stage the, the organ donor coordinator, he came down to measure Ben, to, to measure, to see if his lungs were big enough to sustain a possible donor, but they weren't. So Ben's two kidneys, his pancreas and two sets of, of heart valves mm -hmm. were transplanted. You're my shining light in the dark grey mist. I love you so much and you shall be missed. You're happy, funny and full of sun. I loved you so much but now it's done. Your lovely brown eyes and your big, big smile. Oh dear, I think I'm going to cry. This is the end of my poem to you. I hope you miss me because I miss you.